and welcome back to my channel and day two of the Maths Marathon. This week I'm reading the whole of the Throne of Glass series and uploading a video about each book for you every day. Today I did Throne of Glass and today we're doing the second book in the series, Crown of Midnight. Again, please excuse my hair, I'm in Spain and it's so humid and hot and my hair has just frizzed so much. All my books in this series are just melting as I'm reading them. So hot. This book, oh my goodness, the end of this book. <laughs> Someone fetch my crown. Oh wait, no, 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 I, I don't get one because unlike Selena, I'm not the lost queen of Teresin. As Chol was working out who she actually was at the end of this book, I was there like, Selena, let's start with our favourite assassin. I feel like I got to know Selena more during this book because we found out so much about her life before Endovia, before she became the King's Champion and all of this. And I think that made the ending so much more dramatic because you think you know her and you understand what her life's been, but you don't! You don't! In the last book I thought that she came across like a typical teenage girl. I didn't really get enough of ruthless assassin killer, but that all changed in this book. I feel like we saw that side of her. I think you really saw how lethal she was in this book compared to the last one where she was a little bit more vulnerable. The first book I thought, okay, she's deadly, she's an assassin, but we never really got to see her in action and see her skill, but this time we did, especially when Chol got abducted and she had to fight off all the guards with her knives and her... Oh, she's so cool. Chol became a much more interesting character in this book. He wasn't just brooding in the corner like the last book. I think that's partially because he replaced Dorian as the romantic lead, so he was just more prominent. I feel like we saw more depth in his character. I like Chol. Chol is nice. But to me, Chol's fatal flaw is his undying loyalty to Dorian and the crown. I think this is going to get him in trouble. This is going to cause a rift because he's sort of loyal to Selena in a way, because he loves her, but he's so loyal to Dorian and the crown. And I think there's at some point, there's going to have to be this breaking point where he needs to choose. And I don't know what he's going to do. Nehemiah, oh Nehemiah, why did she have to die? I loved this, her character so much, and when she died, I was like, I hate you, Sarah J. Maas, I hate you. Game of Thrones, it was such a Game of Thrones moment. You, she makes you love these characters, and then she kills them. I'm not killing everybody I love, it's not fair. Archer Finn, oh, didn't like him from the beginning. There's a lot more action in this book than the first one, which I enjoyed more, because we got to see her assassin skills in action instead of just dealing with all of the tests and things from before. So we got to see her in her prime, calm, killing prime in this book. Last time she was in these unusual tests. So we got to see her in action, kind of, but not where she's most comfortable, which is just killing people. <laughs> I'm just slightly confused about who these demon people are lurking around, all these monsters, and all. I'm sure this will be explained eventually, but I just need to know. I have so many questions at the end of this book. Right at the end of the book, she says to Dorian, when she's about to leave, I'll come back, I'll come back for you. What does that mean? Part of me thought, what she'll come back for Dorian because she loves him really, or because he's got magic and they're going to form this alliance. Dorian even says that there's this sort of unspoken meaning behind those words, and I want to know what it is. And then what she says to Chol, she says she'll, she'd still pick him. Is that because she's now saying goodbye? Is this the end of Chol and Selena? or Aileen, whoever she is. I don't know what's going to happen. I just started reading the third book already because I just couldn't wait until I made this video to start the third one. And I'm just completely astounded about her backstory and who she really is. And I'm so excited to keep reading. So that's all I'm going to say about this book because I need to go and read the next one. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Crown of Midnight and what your predictions were at the end of reading this book and whether you were right or wrong. I will have read the third one by the time I upload this video, I think, because I'm addicted. So I'm off to read the third book now. I will see you tomorrow when I'll be talking about Air of Fire. If you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.